Hello and welcome to Sorosa's classes. Today we are discussing the IIT JAM 2020 Mathematical Statistics paper. This question talks about four series and we are asked to find out which of these four series is convergent. Now let's start with the first one. Now the rule that we'll apply here to check is if the limit of a n as n tends to infinity is equal to 0 or not equal to 0. If it is not equal to 0, then the series is divergent. And if it is equal to 0, then the series can be convergent or divergent. So it is inconclusive if the value is equal to 0. So let's check for the first series. So we can write y is equal to limit n tending to infinity of a n which means 5 n plus 1 by 4 n plus 1 whole to the power n. Now 5 n plus 1 can be written as 4 n plus 1 plus n and if I do this and I have 4 n plus 1 in the denominator so this becomes 1 plus n by 4n plus 1 which can be further simplified to have 1 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by n. So we will write it in this form. So y can be written as limit n tending to infinity of 1 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by n whole to the power n. Now I take log on both sides with respect to e. So ln y is equal to limit n tending to infinity ln of this whole expression. Now when I take ln of this whole expression then I can write it as n ln 1 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by n. Now this can be again written in the form limit n tending to infinity of ln 1 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by n over 1 by n. Now as n tends to infinity 1 by n will tend to 0 and therefore the whole function will tend to infinity. So in order to solve this we will apply La Hospital's rule. So that means we will differentiate the numerator and the denominator. So we can write ln y is equal to limit n tending to infinity. Differentiating the numerator we will get 1 over 1 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by n into 1 uh, over 4 plus 1 by n this whole square into minus 1 into minus of 1 by n square and I have in my denominator 1 by n which on differentiation will give me minus 1 by n square. So you see that this term minus 1 by n square is going to cancel from the numerator and the denominator and we are left with the rest of the function. And now we can straight away plug in the value of n equal to infinity here. So I will get ln y is equal to 1 by 1 plus 1 by 4 plus this becomes 0. So 1 plus 1 by 4 is 5 by 4. So 1 over 5 by 4 into 1 over this becomes 0. So 1 over 4 square into minus 1. So that is equal to 4 by 5 into minus of this into 1 by 4 square. 
that means this is equal to minus 1 by 20. So therefore, ln y is equal to minus 1 by 20. So y is equal to e to the power minus 1 by 20. Now this is not equal to 0. This is not equal to 0. This is a finite value. So therefore, the limit of the term a n as n tends to infinity is not equal to 0. Therefore, this series is divergent. This is divergent. So, this is not convergent. Next, we go to the option B. Now, we will follow the same approach for option B as well. So, we will take y is equal to limit n tending to infinity of 1 minus 1 by n whole to the power n. Now, ln y is equal to limit n tending to infinity ln of this term which means it will be n ln of 1 minus 1 by n. So, this again can be written as limit n tending to infinity ln of 1 minus 1 by n over 1 by n. Again, you see that as n tends to infinity, 1 by n tends to 0. Therefore, this whole term will tend to, uh, here also 1 by n will tend to 0. So, ln of 1 is 0. So, this will be of the form 0 over 0. 0 over 0. So, which means that again we have to apply La Hospital's rule. So, then we can write ln y is equal to limit n tending to infinity. We differentiate the numerator and we get 1 over 1 minus 1 by n multiplied by differential of 1 minus 1 by n with regards to n. So, we will have minus 1 into 1 by 1 minus 1 by n whole square and then we have to differentiate 1 minus 1 by n with respect to n which means minus 1 into 1 by n square. So, this is the numerator differential and the denominator differential will be minus 1 by n square. So, this will cancel with this and we are left with uh, the rest of the expression and then we can plug in the value of n tending to infinity in the expression and we will get ln y is equal to 1 by 1 minus 1 by n will become 0. So, 1 by 1 into minus 1 into 1 by 1 minus 0 that is 1 whole square. So, this becomes equal to minus 1. So, that means ln y is equal to minus 1 or y is equal to e to the power minus 1 which is 1 by e. Again, we see that this is a finite term. So, therefore, the limit of the, the, uh, the term as n tends to infinity is not 0 and therefore the series will be divergent. So, the second series is also divergent. So, we come to the third series which is sine of 1 by n over n to the power 1 by n. Now, here we cannot apply this limit rule because as we can see that if n tends to infinity, 1 over n will tend to 0 and the denominator will become infinity to the power 0 or this will tend to 1 and the numerator will tend to 0. So, <laughs> this uh, will eventually in the limit become 0. So, then we cannot conclude anything. So, what we will do is we will test this differently. So, sine 1 by n over n to the power 1 by n will always lie 
between plus 1 by n to the power 1 by n and minus 1 by n to the power 1 by n. So it will always lie between these two limits because sine always lies between plus 1 and minus 1. So therefore we can see that in the limit when n tends to uh, infinity when n tends to infinity this side of the expression will become minus 1 and and the other side of the expression will become plus 1 so we cannot say with certainty whether this expression will take uh, uh, will take a particular value as uh, n tends towards infinity so basically it will oscillate like this and it will keep tending towards zero it will keep tending towards zero so so we cannot conclude anything so definitely we cannot say that uh, this curve is is uh, convergent uh, or divergent so this is inconclusive Now coming to option D. Now in option D, we have 1 minus cos of 1 by n. Now, this multiplied by root n. So this is the sequence given. Now we know that cos of 1 by n is always oscillating between plus 1 and minus 1. Therefore, minus cos of 1 by n will also oscillate between plus 1 and minus 1. And hence, 1 minus cos 1 by n will lie between 2 and 0. And therefore, root n into 1 minus cos 1 by n will always oscillate or lie between 2 root n and 0. Now that means we can clearly see that this sequence will approach 0 when n tends to infinity. This sequence will approach, the term will approach 0 from the positive side. So it is it only can take positive values this expression cannot take negative values and this is the difference between the previous one and this one where this expression can take both positive as well as negative values and if you look at the curves that will make it very clear so the curve of of uh, sin x is like this where the value of sin x is, is 0 and if you approach x equal to 0 from positive side you will have positive values of sin x whereas if you approach it from the negative sign side you will have negative values of sin x whereas in case of the cos curve the cos curve looks like this where looks like this where at x equal to 0 cos x equal to 1 and on both sides it is positive so that means if you approach x equal to 0 from negative side or from positive side then you will have the, the uh, value of the curve as positive in both cases so this is the difference between the sine curve and the cos curve and this is why when the cos curve approaches uh, zero, x equal to 0 it approaches from the positive side only and hence the limit of this both the functions is 0 at n equal to infinity but one function is approaching in an oscillatory fashion which means from both positive as well as negative side whereas the other function 
is approaching that value only from the positive uh, side or with only positive values so this is why the uh, curve or the sequence given in option D is convergent so remember if you have this limit equal to 0 then it will be convergent if and only if the values of the uh, function or the sequence is either positive or negative as n tends to infinity it cannot have both values it has to be either positive or negative so in in case d we see that uh, the uh, function is approaching the limiting value zero with all positive values and hence it fulfills it, this condition uh, that it is uh, positive um, with respect to all its uh, values and approaching a limiting value therefore it is convergent and in the other case the the function is approaching the limiting value of zero but is taking both positive and negative values so this is why this cannot be convergent or is inconclusive.